Welcome to the uh, Self Storage Insights Podcast. Uh, this podcast will be sponsored by CC Storage. Uh, I'm Ben Shirey, and today I'm joined by Eddie Laflamme uh, from Swift Storage up in Rockland, Maine. And uh, so, Eddie, uh, great to have you on the show today or on the podcast. Uh, excited to have you and uh, get to talk to you a little bit about your business. Um, and so, if you don't mind filling us in a little bit, give us a little bit of your history, how you got into the industry, and uh, yeah, kind of where you're at right now. Sure. Thanks for having me. It's it's my pleasure. Um, I got into this business 36, 37 years ago. Um, I came into a little bit of money and could start a business. And so for uh, a year or so, we, we thought about different businesses and, and the pros and cons. I was a long haul truck driver at the time. So we had plenty of time to think. And these types of uh, this type of business had hadn't gotten to my area yet. There wasn't another self-service storage facility within 45 miles of where I wanted to build. And I went to the one that was 45 miles away. I actually stopped at 17 different storage facilities before I made the, the decision to get into storage. And I talked to the owners and the, the managers. And uh, so I went to the one over in Chelsea, Maine, and the gentleman over there that, that owned it, I hired him as my consultant, and he helped me and saved me an awful lot of money. And uh, then, oh, the following year, we started a storage facility together, and we've been partners for the past 35 years. Um, awesome. it, it's worked out really, really well. Um, his son and myself, uh, became an erecting company that we built. Um, I built 50 of these buildings myself personally. Um, he and I built together for two or three years and then he went on his own. And of course I just stayed here and would build, uh, when, when a job came along, um, I'd bring a crew in and would erect, um, the buildings. I became the, the door, uh, consultant for one of the bigger door companies and they'd call me to fix any of their problems and stuff okay. anywhere in the state. So, um, awesome. I've been at it awesome. a while. Yeah, that's awesome. So, so your first, uh, storage or self-storage, uh, facility, did you build that or did you purchase it? Um, I built it. Um, in fact, I'm sitting in it now. Okay. Uh, we've, we've grown quite a bit. We're now, um, uh, 18, 18 acres, 16 acres with, um, 15 buildings. Okay. Two of them wow. are 8,000 8, square feet and about 10 years, well, nine years ago, we get into portable storage. Right. So we do portable storage, climate controlled storage and regular storage as well. Okay. Yeah. I did see that on your website that you had the different types of units there. The portable storage, has that been a pretty big pickup for your business or is it more it, overhead than it's worth? It's been fantastic. Okay. Um, we, we have quite a number of them. We, we also became the distributor of uh, Havner boxes in uh, Maine, New Hampshire and Vermont. So we sell them as well as rent them out. Oh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's awesome to hear. Um, so if you can remember back to when you were starting out, right, you know, 36 years ago, what, um, what was kind of one of the pain points that you had to overcome or where, where you, you know, felt like you might've got in over your head a little bit with storage or was there not anything like that? Um, there, there was, uh, all, all of the people that I asked about storage the you know, what were the problems with storage? Um, almost to a person, the managers would say, I don't own it. I wish I owned it instead of managed it. Mm -hmm. um, and fighting boredom was their problem. I said, that's no problem for me at all. Um, but the thing that they didn't tell me about was snow leaking into the units. With roll-up doors, if you get the wind right from the right direction mm -hmm. and a fine blowing snow, it can get in past the doors. And that was a problem at first. We've, we've since solved it, but um, we put brushes along the edges of the doors to stop the snow from getting in. But that was a problem for the first few years. Okay. And that, was that like an insurance liability or anything like that, as far as that, that was, you know, your overhead or was that passed down to the, the tenant? Uh, it, it was, 
pretty much the tenants problem because they okay. sign off that in the, in the lease that we have, um, they sign off that they've inspected it and, and it serves their purpose. Um, okay. So it, it doesn't really fall back to us. The, the best thing about it though, was the fact that um, we, I spoke before a legislative committee 33 or 34 years ago uh, to get the Self-Service Storage Act of Maine passed. And Scott Zucker, one of the, uh, the, the biggest self-service storage lawyer in the country that I know of, um, has said that Maine has one of the best um, self-service storage acts in the country. Um, it's, it's very well done. We've gone back and amended it a number of times and it's, it really protects the owners and the tenants as well. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. Good deal. Um, as far as, as far as your day-to-day -day operations, um, you know, with, with, you have multiple facilities and all that stuff now, what, what do you kind of find takes up more of your time than you like, or, or where do you find yourself spending most of the time or maybe that's well, the problem? See, I'm, I'm very, very fortunate. Um, my daughter pretty much runs the, the big facility that I'm at now. Um, I have a great manager up in, in Searsport, Maine. Um, and both, uh, well, both of my grandsons work for me, delivering and picking up the portable containers. Okay. Um, and my wife works here as well. So there's five of us all together. So I get to play a lot of golf. Right. Oh, that's all. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's always the goal, huh? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, so if, if you were say I was going to, you know, purchase one facility that had say, you know, 200 units, would that be like a one person, you know, one person running that full time, or is that not even really a full time uh, endeavor? It all depends on how you want to do it. We have facilities that, um, are local to us that are run remotely. The, people live two states away and run it from there. Okay. Uh, there are people that are, are doing that now. We really like the hands-on having somebody there. People have problems with their doors, with locks, mm -hmm. uh, all different kinds of things. Uh, and so we like having somebody there. All of my facilities, I've, uh, I've sold two of them and I have two of them now. Uh, we've always had on-site management. We just okay. believe it, it works best. What is the way that you would typically notify your tenant? So like uh, 2020, for an example, right? The economy just completely shifted. Um, storage units have grown, you know, dramatically in the last few years. How, how do you decide when you're going to do a price increase and how do you relay that to your tenants? We, we kind of have a special way that we do it um, because I, I really appreciate my tenants they're the ones that are paying my mortgage. Uh, they're the ones that are making it all possible. Um, I still have the original customer from 1987 wow. um, is still awesome. here. Um, but when we go to do a rate increase, what we do is we give the, the existing tenants the opportunity to stay at the old rate for up to a year by paying in advance. This okay. lets them know that I'm looking out for their interest. And if you take a unit and you can collect the money for a year in advance, you don't usually have to go up that small amount that you would normally go up. So right. I, I've always thought that that worked best, but we've only had, I think, four rate increases in 36 years. Okay. Do you, do you currently have a waiting list on any of your properties or? Uh, yes, we, we, we're right up full. We have, um, but with the portable containers, I can just pick up the phone and, and have, and have more containers here. So I can okay. just go as, as I need to, um, right. Without having to go through all the, the building permits and everything to try and erect another building or something. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's all I need to do is to clear a little bit of land and, and I can put the containers up. Okay. Yeah. That's and, and awesome. We build the containers in just 15 minutes. So it works out. Oh, wow. well. That's very, yeah, very impressive. Yeah. If, if I were going to start a new facility now, I would do it with um, some of the, I call them brick, brick and mortar, you know, right. tin sheds, what, whatever you want to call them, but um, with a, a um, number of those buildings and climate controlled storage and portables. Um, okay. I'm doing that up in Searsport right now. I have all three types of, of storage there. It just, it lets you get so many more customers that by just going with the regular type of storage, you can't get. 
Right. What, what, as far as, um, price wise for a brick and mortar location, you know, a, 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 well, I don't know what size your units were, but a 10 by 10, say a hundred square foot, you know, storage unit versus a portable unit. Like do you make a lot more money on the portable units or do you charge a lot more for them? No, um, not a lot more. They're slightly higher, but not a lot more. Um, okay. and I, I think those are, uh, I don't want to say going to put regular storage out of business in the future, but I think they're the way to go. Uh, I can, with a portable, you only handle the, the, uh, your, your, your things twice to load them into the container and to take them out of the container with regular storage. You have to handle them four times, um, uh, out of your house, into a truck, out of the truck, right. into the storage, et cetera. So, um, Anytime you can save money and do it for about the same amount of money. The and amount then the convenience of being able to, you know, where your storage is right there on your property versus and, driving down to the storage unit. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. And then what I do is I put the storage container inside a climate controlled building and they can have access um, during business hours whenever they okay. need it. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. How, how, um, which kind of getting to the next question a little bit and kind of working our way into it. How do you handle a customer that gets behind on, on their, you know, their lease payment or their rent payment? Um, yep. um any, any of our units, whether it be cubicles or containers, um, has a double lock system. So we can just put an overlock right on it. Um, okay. if the, if the container is out on site, we just have one of our employees when they're going by throw an overlock on, People call us up and we remind them that they haven't paid their bill and and they pay it over the phone and we shoot somebody out to take the overlock off. Okay. And now is, is Maine pretty regulated or I know you were working on the legislation stuff up there. Like, so for example, in Pennsylvania, I was just looking into it a little bit. Like, so after seven days, I can assess a late fee. I can't lock anybody out of their unit for 30 days. Um, and then farther along down that stream, right? After 60 days, I have to put something in the newspaper if I'm going to sell the stuff off that's in the unit. Uh, do you have a lot of those kind of stipulations that you got to work around or how much yeah, but, stuff goes into it? Like I say, Oz is very, very good. Um, I can uh, put an overlock on the day that you are late. Okay. I can cut it off, cut your lock off after 30 days. I can auction your things off after 45. Our practice is to wait 90 days to do it, but that's, just our personal preference. The law says we can do it in 45. Okay. Uh, the other has, thing, has, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Has, has that other, been, been a big problem for you as far as, you know, having people that don't pay for their stuff and that you end up in an auction situation? Not, not at all. We do have auctions. I would say almost every month, not quite, but probably 10 months out of the year or nine months out of the year, we have an auction, but with a thousand units to auction off one or two is not, you know, not a lot at all. Um, so I wouldn't say it's a problem at all. The other thing that our lease says, and, and it, I would um, say to you that you should consider um, seeing about changing the law because it's not as hot as it seems. But okay. um, our uh, uh, law says that if the value in the, of the contents in the unit is under seven hundred and fifty dollars. You don't even have to go through the sale process. Oh, okay. You can just dispose of their goods. Oh wow! Um, so no notices, um, no anything, and that's one of the reasons why I like waiting ninety days instead of just forty-five. Right. Okay. Yeah. Very good information. I appreciate that. That's all. Yeah. Awesome to know. Uh, as far as as far as filling your units, uh, do you do you ever seem like is there you know I know recently it seems like the the boom with self storage a lot of people you know everybody's buying tons of stuff so everybody needs storage. Have you had a problem over the last thirty seven years or so getting the units filled and and what type of marketing did you use to get your units to be you know to be um, occupancy? It, this is going to seem strange, but um, because no one else was doing it in the area we hit a break even point on, at this place in only six weeks. It was carrying itself in six weeks. In That's 30, awesome. 36 years, we've never done any advertising. Um, we give to a lot of the sports teams and the kids and stuff like that. But we've, we're usually within, we might have four or five empty units 
um, once in a great while. So we're, wow. we stay full all the time. Yeah. That's awesome. Have, have you noticed a lot more people in your area building storage units or has it not <laughs> affected you a whole lot yet? The town, I live in the next town over and that particular town has four convenience stores and 11 storage places. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. That's what, what do you get for the person who has everything? A storage unit, sure. right? <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. No, that's, that's awesome. I, I appreciate, I appreciate all this. And I mean, yeah, it's been awesome talking to you. Uh, one, one last thing, just a little segment that I'd like to do is, you know, in 37 years or whatever, what, what's kind of the craziest experience you've ever had with a tenant or uh, kind of like a horror story of, of, you know, um, dealing with somebody. Uh, I'll, I'll try to keep this PG rated. Okay? <laughs> okay, we have had some that I could tell you about that wouldn't fall in that category. But we had an Elvis impersonator that was trying to live in one of our storage units, and we had to remove them. Um, oh my! And he was only trying to live in a five by ten, so he he couldn't even stretch out and sleep in it. He had to sleep sitting up with his back against the wall. That's crazy. What in the world? Now, what, is there different, was there different restrictions to get him to move out? Like as far as with, you know, health and safety or whatever, if somebody's actually dwelling there? But most um, towns will, the, the police department will come right out and remove them. It's okay. not usually a problem. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you'd get into a big legal dispute, you know, or, or some type of issue with that. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, Hey Eddie, I, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate you sharing with us. Um, you know, last thing is if, if I was getting ready to purchase a storage unit or build a storage unit, do you have like one piece of advice you'd share with me uh, that your best, you know, best piece of advice for, for getting started out? Sure. And, and it's something that I've done is I would find somebody that's in the business and hire them as a consultant. Um, it's usually not a lot of money and it, it saves you and protects you. Um, I was able to call the, the gentleman that became my partner. And we've done it for other people um, and answer a thousand questions for him. How do I do this? Who do I call? Where do, where do I get this? Um, all, all of this is information that somebody who's in the business will have and, and they'll share it with you. So, um, right. you know, don't offer to take up their time for nothing, but right. uh, be prepared to write a small check and they'll save you a lot more money than what you're going to be paying out. Okay. That's awesome. Awesome piece of information. Cause yeah, I don't even know that I would have thought to go that route, but I mean, yeah, that's, that's awesome. I appreciate you sharing that with us. So, well, hey, Eddie, Eddie, it was awesome to talk to you today. Appreciate you being on the podcast with me and uh, I'm sure I'll talk to you again in the future. So uh, yep. Appreciate looking, your time. Looking forward to it. Thanks for having me. This podcast episode was brought to you by CC Storage. CC Storage is a property management software that helps you pass the fees of credit card processing onto your customers so you don't pay credit card processing fees ever again. If you enjoyed the podcast, there's a link below where you can fill out a form and be interviewed on the podcast with myself. If that interests you, please click the link below and we'll be in touch. We hope you enjoyed this podcast episode. Don't forget to check back next week for another interview with another self-storage property owner.